Welcome to the Centre for Christian Spirituality and thank you for joining us on this Easter Sunday. Um, we hope that you will find solace and comfort and inspiration in our Lexio Reflection for the reading of the day. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. I often find with a, a gospel that it, um, it's not really the whole story, it's a segment from something else and I felt that about the gospel today, that there are sort of five scenes in the final section of Matthew. Um, the first is the burial of Jesus and not only Mary Magdalene but Mary, the other Mary uh, was there for that. And the second scene is about the soldiers being appointed. The disciples clearly weren't sure about what the resurrection meant, but it seems the Jewish leaders were, were what it meant, even though they didn't believe it, but they sent the soldiers there to make sure it didn't happen. And then the third one, third section or third scene is the one we're going to talk about. And the fourth scene is about the soldiers again uh, saying what happened or a false account of what happened. <coughs> and then the final scene, which all of it leads up to and which is the most important one, is um, on the mountain in Galilee where Jesus sees the disciples for the last time and gives them their mandate to go and preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Trinity and teaching them all the things that Jesus had done and that he is with us till the end of time. What we're talking about in this section is the central section, not the most important, but you can see that the two Marys are present, the soldiers are present, so what has gone before has prepared the way. Um, it's presented as a, a divine theophany, the angel coming, uh, a bit like Jesus at the Transfiguration, more like the angel in, in the book of Daniel, signifying the presence of God. Um, and the message, the key to the whole um, event, this particular section anyway, is that Jesus is risen and go to Galilee. They're the two things that are coming through. And even when Jesus meets the, the women a bit later, he just says the same thing. Well, the fact that he's there means that he's risen, but that he um, urges them uh, to go to Galilee. So it's a very um, brief presentation of the resurrection, simply the statement that Jesus is risen um, by the angel, but leading on um, to that final scene in Galilee. So the Lord is risen, go to Galilee, where the final message uh, will be given. What strikes me about this actually, or pondering this part, is it's as though Matthew was writing this in a very big hurry because it's as though it's like a cartoon almost, like it speeds through. But the thing that I suppose struck me was the small incidents where the, the sense of joy and elation of the resurrection but there's also this sense of fear associated with like the poor, the um, soldiers, they're, they're like dead men because they're so shocked and terrified. The two women, they don't know whether to be joyful or filled with fear. And Jesus, that, that message that comes through, do not be afraid. Um, so that's what struck me today was the speed. But this, for me, coming through, do not be afraid because... Um, 
there's something that I think that resonates in my heart with this idea about do I truly believe in the resurrection? Like, goodness gracious. Mm. Yeah. Now, I, I'm fascinated by it. I'm thinking that if something is given to to Mary and those with her and they're told to, to go and tell the guys of, of something has happened and... Uh, um, and then the upshot of all of it at the end is going to Galilee. And, uh, you know, they've, they've, there's really no kind of, uh, kind of map that's mm. spelling out what it's all about, where it's going to lead and what's going to happen and what to expect. And, and it raises the question too, I think, of the significance of Galilee. Mm. Galilee. Is it, what, what's that? Well, it is. Well, see, in, in Luke, for example, for Luke, it's Jerusalem. Yes. Yeah, that's right. It all ends in yeah, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and from Jerusalem it goes out to the world. Galilee has really been the home of the movement. Yeah. Right? That everything's mm. happened pretty well mm. um, in Galilee. So Matthew is, is focusing on that yeah. um, that particular area there, yeah. rather than Jerusalem, which has always been the, the city of enmity, yeah. uh, where Jesus met his enemies. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No, thank you for that. No. I, I think it's... Um, it, it's important here, I think, too, to see in the context of the five things that, you, like in the beginning of the gospel again, yeah. you've got the powers of um, of humanity, you know, mm. the, the mm. natural powers endeavouring to sort of hem this in, mm. but really the power of God just breaks mm. through it all. And I think you can see that in the in the enmity narratives yeah. as well as here. So again, for Matthew, it's um, um, what he began with is what he's finishing with in a sense. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Well, we invite you now to take the scripture passage and contemplate it. I wonder what it is speaking to you in your heart today. Take a moment to consider that. Well, welcome back. We invite you now to listen to the scripture read a second time. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. <clears throat> there you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee there they will see me. Uh, on the, the second reading, for me, in my heart, in my daily life, it's this um, concept of do not be afraid, go and tell my brothers, go and evangelise, go, leave, go. And the other word that keeps is this suddenly, what are you waiting for? Suddenly, it's this sense of energy and um, it's an imperative, go. Yes, I, I focused on the women, who again are disciples, as we've seen before. I, I felt that um, there's a contrast between how the guards uh, reacted and how the women mm -hmm. reacted. Mm -hmm. The guards sort of reacted as, um, well, they, they were like being dead, in a contrast to Jesus, who is alive. Mm -hmm. But the women, I think, saw it as... Um, um, as, as a divine intervention, and the you know their fear, the angel said, as the angels usually do, do not be afraid, afraid. and they recognised that uh, it was from God. And then when Jesus Himself appeared, then they 
acknowledged who he was and, yeah. and worship him. Yeah. So I felt that, um, that they were the model that we needed to work with and that they didn't understand. They were just going to the to the tomb, not to anoint, because that had been done, um, but just out of reverence for Jesus. And then they were confronted with that, and their faith grew. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt that I'd like to reflect on the resurrection and just see how that draws my faith further. I can't help thinking of a couple of weeks ago, Pope Francis, speaking of the of the Bible as the book that belongs to God's people. And uh, that being so, then I think it's a book that's drawing us into the story and opening it up to us in a way that is taking us somewhere, somewhere we may not know, like where's the Galilee of our, of our lives? So the underpinning thing that you've heard repeated a couple of times today of the need of not to be afraid. And I'm thinking as we are a people of the resurrection, a people of hope, that not to be afraid is more imperative than ever perhaps for us in these uncharted waters of this day and age when we are being asked to do things that we're unaccustomed to doing. So um, I'm just hoping that I, along with people like yourselves, might be able to be true to the invitation given to us in the gospel today to be faithful witnesses to the resurrection, the presence of the Lord among us, and not to be afraid. We invite you now to consider what are the words, what's the scripture um, prompting you to do in your life today? So take a moment, have a look at the words of scripture again, and uh, just ponder what are the words that are prompting you to take action in your life? Well, we know it's easy to have the good intentions, but it's very difficult to follow through. And we need God's uh, constant support and encouragement. So we invite you now to take a moment to pray to God to give you the uh, courage and perseverance to commit those things to, uh, to your daily life or respond in your daily life um, as, you, as you have decided to do. Take a moment now to pray. Well, thank you so much for joining us here at the Centre for Christian Spirituality on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. We will now conclude with the prayer from the Mass of the Day. O oh God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service through Christ our Lord.